Welcome to Bloodbath and Beyond. Today we review the last film produced by Wes Craven, The Girl in the Photographs. Directed by Nick Simon, starring Claudia Lee and Cal Penn, The Girl in the Photographs is about Colleen, a girl from a small town who starts discovering pictures of girls that are mutilated or tied up, and she's soon approached by a photographer from LA who's looking to take some shots of her. Well, someone else is watching Colleen and wants to capture a little bit more than her beauty. So what do we like? This film has suspense thriller written all over it. I mean, just how it was paced, the story itself, it really had you on the edge of your seat trying to figure out who the killer was and how they were going to attack next. And what their motivations were. That's what's going to keep you guessing. Like, what's the reason behind everything? Is there a reason? You do find out there is a solid conclusion, but we're not going to talk about that. And to help drive the suspense was definitely the cinematography. It was great from the beginning to the end. We had lots of long takes and steady cam shots and just creepy POV style shots that are very reminiscent of Halloween. And looking into this a little bit further, we found out it's actually the cinematographer from Halloween, Dean Cundy, who actually has like a ridiculous amount of cinematography credits such as Jurassic Park, The Fog, The Thing. The feel that you get, the environment in this movie really is Creepy. Like, there are numerous times throughout this film where we're getting the characters walking through a house and then we have the killers in the mask who are in the house at the same time and it was just cleverly shot through lighting, through how the camera was placed, having them in and out of the frame and just having them appear. Now in a lot of these films that we see, there's the red herring effect. You're trying to guess who done it. What I liked about the twist in this one is you're not just guessing who the killer is, you're guessing where the killer is and when they're gonna strike next. It's really intense how they executed this. And really tying everything together are the central cast. Every actor in this movie played their role extremely well. We had some side characters like Katie Isabel and Mitch Pelegi from Sons of Anarchy, an outstanding performance from Claudia Lee who played Colleen, and of course, Cal Penn. He actually blew me away. I was shocked because this is Kumar. He kind of plays this pompous asshole douchebag photographer. Just the way that he delivered his lines and the way that he interacted with all of the characters, he was like a lovable douchebag to an extent. <laughs> actually tell her that we're having people over at this house that we're staying at. And tell her everyone knows it is the cabin on the lake road, but tell her it's actually more like a house. You'll make it sound cute. When the people were murdered, for this style of film to actually go out and us see kills was a nice touch. Being that this is a thriller, it's important to have a good score to really drive that intensity and we had a fantastic score. Well, it was subtle in most parts. It really started amping up as the whole film comes to a close. So now let's move on to our dislikes. Well, I don't have a lot of dislikes for this movie. There is something that is very nitpicky. It's the fact that the movie kind of goes along this path as if it's going to be a whodunit, but we see the killers. We see the killers very early on. Within the first 20 minutes, maybe 15 minutes, we actually see the faces of the killers nulling out the whodunit aspect of this movie. If they would have taken out like two or three of these shots, it could have been a little bit more tense. They didn't need to take the masks off because revealing the face didn't really establish anything or make their characters stronger in any way. In fact, it took away from the mystery, which makes their characters weaker in this style of film. If the mask stayed on for at least 40 minutes or 50 minutes, it would have been a really intense reveal, and I think people would have enjoyed it that much more. Though I gave the story a really high praise, there is one part of the script that I didn't really like, and that was the sheriff and deputy. Throughout the film, the sheriff and deputy play these pictures off as though it's nothing at all. And I get what they were trying to do with it by making it more modern and toying with the idea that they're just photoshopped and it's a prank. It's an issue that in any other film or real life, the cops wouldn't take it as lightly as they did. So I thought that was kind of weird. Now it's time for our final thoughts and ratings. The Girl in the Photographs 
is an amazing film. I absolutely loved it. You had the feeling of the strangers where you're building that tension of these killers creeping in and out of the shadows. We had sweet practical effects in our kills. We had whodunits. We had bait and switches. Like this film had a lot of stuff that would keep you interested and keep you on the edge of your seats. It was just an all around enjoyable film. It's cool, it's different, and it's Wes Craven's last film. He backed one hell of a good film, and I can see why he did it. And with that being said, I'm gonna give this four and a half Longhorn Trucks out of five. This is an absolutely stunning thriller that I think everybody should watch. It's not only shot extremely well, but the score is fantastic, all of the acting is great, and the story is original. We have a hilarious performance from Cal Penn, despite the context and the subject matter of this movie. He did a great job, and so did Claudia Lee, who I've never heard of before, but is, she's definitely on my radar now. I had a very small issue with the way that they delivered the killers because they showed us a little bit too early on who they were, and so that's a little bit disappointing because I wish we had uh, more of a red herring effect. So I'm gonna give this four and a half cheap bottles of wine, because you wanna get it in, out of five. As always, thank you for watching. Like this video and comment below with your thoughts on the film if you've seen it. If you haven't, make sure you check out the description because we do have links to where you can find it, and we highly encourage you guys to check it out. And if this is your first time here, make sure you subscribe to the channel to stay updated with everything Bloodbath and Beyond.